Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, reading Edgar Allan Poe. Um, when I was a kid, like I think I was 11 or 12 when I got my our first um, Poe book. It was a um, poetry collection. It was really thin. Um, and I had that thing for years. And um, I honestly don't know what happened to it. Um, I think it's just one of those things that kind of fell apart over time. Um, but not too long after that, I was probably like 13 or 14, my grandma gave me um, a giant hardcover collected, like the complete poetry and fiction of Poe, and um, I had that book up until that, um, when the garage got flooded um, up in Big Bear, but um, I took that book with me everywhere, like I was that dude that was walking around with a big fat book and that was my big fat book and I thought it was like I liked it but there was also that like oh that kid's dark he just reads Poe and um, all that noise and um, it's funny because like um, the telltale heart was my favorite like I read that all the time, and, um, The Black Cat, and, um, those were probably my f favorite. I would read a lot of the poetry, um, because I was more familiar with it from coming into Poe that way, you know. But for the most part, I haven't really read Poe like that. Because, I mean, we're talking up until I was probably early 20s. I was reading Poe all the time. Like, I would sit there and my rats would, like, crawl over me. Um, <laughs> um, and I would, like read Poe and listen to weird music and um, sit by candlelight as you would, you know. Um, but I had four rats and um, I would wear a hoodie and they would like be in my pocket or be in my hood and um, I would go to restaurants or cafes and I would sit there at night out on the patio of the coffee shops and um, chain smoke and drink coffee and read Poe. And my rats would come out. And like if I had crackers or whatever food I had, um, I would like feed them into my hoodie or into my pocket. Um, and every once in a while they would come out and I'd freak out because if anyone saw me with a bunch of rats all over me, I'd get booted. Um, but you know how it is. Um, just chilling, doing stuff you normally do. But, um, you know, and it's so funny. And I think a lot of my fascination with Poe was, um, I was a big fan of Famous Monsters from Filmland, and I would have a ton of those magazines, and this was in the 90s when they, um, 
started it up again. And um, my dad had a bunch of the early ones. And so when I would go to his place, I would be able to get some of the old ones and go through them. But I just had a stack of the newer ones and would read those. And because of that, um, I was, because every issue had some Roger Corman Poe movie in there with Vincent Price. And so, like, Vincent Price became my spirit animal. And um, I would read all these Poe stories, but they would, like, the voice in my head was Vincent Price's voice. And, um, which completely adds, like, so much to it. And, um, so when I was done with my reading, I would pull out a videotape of, like, Pit and the Pendulum. That was my favorite Vincent Price Poe movie. Or, um, Fall of the House of Usher, or Tomb Lygia, or, um, The Raven I was on the fence with. It was kind of corny, but, um, I, I was just watching all these... Roger Corman, Vincent Price movies, and, um, or reading the Poe book, or <laughs> writing my own stuff that was just, like, rehashed Poe, you know, like, I would be writing it, and, um, the language I was using was very Poe-esque, and, um, it, it was just so funny. And I had all these, um, like, black and white, 8 by 10 glossy photos of, like, Vincent Price or Boris Karloff as Frankenstein or Bela Lugosi as Dracula or, um, one of my favorite ones was from Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, and it was the two of them with Glenn Strange. Um, but And then I would get these, like, cheap black wooden frames, and I had them all hung up. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I was very goth, um, very emo. But it's funny because, like, it's, like, a very consumer-based goth, you know, like Universal Monsters and um, AIP and Famous Monsters of Film Man. But anyway, the whole reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, I read... Um, it's so funny. I'm supposed to be reading other stuff. I have a TBR. But I read... Um, all my favorite Poe stories the other day for like the first time in years. And, um, I read the mask of red death and I was just like, how does no one see that this is what's been going on the last year? Like, not that it's like prophetic, but it is you know, and as I'm reading it, I'm like, you know why the prince had a masquerade ball? That's because, you know, there's like social distancing guidelines and stay at home orders. So everyone has to like be kind of in a ball outfit to hide their identity and all this stuff. And, um, it was just, if you haven't read Mask of Red Death, basically there's a plague going around called the Red Death that basically kills you quite instantly. Um, and it's running rampant through the um, peasants. And the prince decides that he's tired of all this depression crap and he's going to have a big party and invite all his rich, wealthy friends over. 
And um, do, I guess I could round it. The story's like 200 years old. Um, basically, at midnight, this person shows up and is ghastly like it has like the most ghastly mask and ghastly clothes and just like totally steals the show which the prince is pissed off about and the prince is like um like who the f do you think you are i'm gonna freaking hang your booty in the morning and you're gonna swing at the end of a rope um and all that fun stuff. And the new reveler walks around and just is like looking at everybody, breathing in their general direction. And then um, the prince goes to attack him. And the prince drops dead. And everyone's like, what the hell happened? And so they go and grab him and try to rip his mask off to see who it is. And we find that it is no mask. And then everyone at the party dies. Um, and the person just looked so ghastly because they were infected with the Red Death. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sure there's going to be tons of stories written about stupid fuckers having parties and stuff during COVID and um, I don't know I guess it'd have to be like super COVID so they could die right away in order for it to work I don't know um, but it was just like I, I was just like people are so stupid like it says it right in the book guys um, and I know some of you right now are going like, sheep, or whatever. I don't know if people are still doing that. I think everyone pretty much knows that COVID's like a real thing. And, um, one thing that I've noticed that is kind of annoying is that a lot of people have COVID, don't go to the doctor, and when they do finally go to the doctor, they have pneumonia because they had COVID and their lungs are effed and their body's effed. And they're like, oh, you know what? Um, no, I don't have COVID, but I have pneumonia and all this. And um, it's weird because all these people with pneumonia are people who like have multiple people in their house with pneumonia at the same time. It's very strange. I've never known so many people to have pneumonia. Um, never in my entire life have I known so many people to get pneumonia. And it's just weird that it's happening during a time of a pandemic that attacks your lungs. Um, very weird, strange stuff out there. A lot of coincidences happening so anyway um i just want everyone to be safe like i'm tired of this you're tired of this zoe's tired of this everyone's tired of this just um we're so close to having it all wrapped up and being able to just freaking be normal again although to be completely honest um i was kind of built for pandemics um, my life really hasn't changed that whole much. Like, really, the only thing that's different is that I wear a mask when I go out now. And, um, to be honest, I might, um, keep doing that after all of this. Until we're not allowed to wear masks in banks anymore. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything's cool. But it's just neat to go back and read Poe. Um, some of the stories that um, 
I used to read over and over and over and over again are, they're so fresh, but like, also like I remember like where I was sitting 25 years ago when I read that the first time, like it'll like pop back into my head and it's just like so weird. But then, um, like something will happen in it that I don't remember, like the premature burial. This is a good one because the premature burial, I used to read that all the time because at the beginning of the story, it has all of these like factual accounts of people who were buried prematurely. I remembered those like vividly and, um, then I read the whole story and I completely forgot that, um, well, I don't want to ruin this one. I already ruined Red Death for you. But um, how the story ends up, completely forgot about that part. But I remember I've read that story. I used to read that out to my friends um, when I would just like, I don't know if I was just trying to scare them or what, but I'm like, yeah, dude, people get buried alive all the time. It's a re the reason why we embalm people in the United States is so um, people don't like come up from the dead and it's just to like cover people's asses who pronounced people dead and then buried them. So they embalm them and then that way they're really dead. So whether they're really dead or not, like there ain't no getting out of it. I was such a dick. But anyway, so read some Poe guys if you haven't read Poe before. Um, I can't believe that um, there's people who haven't read Poe, especially younger folks. Um, Poe used to be taught in school like crazy. Like, everyone had read Poe. But, uh, yeah, so whatever, you know. It's all good. But, yeah, um, wear a mask and don't leave your house ever.